What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be working on my fourth gen 4Runner. In the past, I upgraded my basic head unit that had just CD player, AM, FM radio, to this 2015 Toyota Yaris head unit with a touch screen and Bluetooth, and that made a huge difference. But we live in the 21st century, and I was really lacking that Apple CarPlay. So I really wanted to upgrade to something that has Apple CarPlay. So I have decided to go with this head unit. It has pretty large screen, so I'm not sure how much I'm gonna like it but it had a lot of good reviews on Amazon so I'm gonna open this box up show you what's inside stick this unit in and see how it works and if it's actually worth getting this unit BAM very nicely packaged which is always a good sign here's the user manual this here's how you remove the screen if you need to you'll see that in a second and this head unit comes with all the harnesses that you'll need for this install and I'll go through all the connectors in a little bit a couple of brackets and here's the head unit itself. Very nicely packaged. I always like that. La -da! This thing is huge. So you can see how the screen is protruding out. So you're able to adjust the angle of it, which is really nice. Here's the back of the unit. You have all your plugs back here. You can do backup camera, you can do everything. So it feels very nice and solid. To start disassembling, first thing you'll need to do is remove this thing, disconnect all the plugs. Let me tell you something, all these plugs are pain in the butt. It's out. All right, next step, spool up on this plastic and this whole thing is just gonna come out. There's nothing attached to it. Next, you'll need to remove the knee panel and you'll find two 10 millimeter bolts, one on this side and another one on this side. You'll need to remove this ring around ignition, bam. And this whole thing should just pop right out. Once you remove this, you'll just need to access that 10 millimeter bolt all the way down here, and that's it. And you can temporarily hang this thing back up. Next step is this little storage compartment, and you just open it and pull up on it. All right, next step is we need to remove these climate controls, and you'll find 10 millimeter bolt down here, and yank on this and this climate control will pop right out. People are saying be careful not to set off your airbags, but I don't think they'll set off your airbags. And yeah, that's what the climate controls look like. Next step is we need to take this panel off and you'll find two bolts up here. Now take this knee panel off, open the glove box and slowly, oops, work it loose. Disconnect your four-wheel drive, disconnect your rear window switch, disconnect your emergency light switch. Done deal. Next step is we gotta take this head unit out. You'll find two bolts. I like this head unit. It gave me nice OEM look, and this is a direct fit from uh, Toyota Yaris. Carefully disconnect everything. You can see the video how I was able to just plug this one in directly into this 4Runner. I wish it had CarPlay. All right, before we're gonna start working with this unit, let's remove this screen. It does have a protective film on it, but still. So you'll find these two little levers back here. You just push them one to each side and slide it straight up. Bam. Now it's detached. Pulling that. Should come right out. All right, this here is the head unit without the screen. This head unit came with a reasonable diagram and the booklet. It shows you the diagram of all these plugs and what goes where. You can install a rear view camera and a front view camera. I'm not gonna do that. For now, I'm just gonna focus on Apple CarPlay and I'm gonna install the Wi-Fi antenna. I'm gonna quickly go over all the harnesses and what I'm gonna use and why. Here's what's in this bag. It has this SIM card slot. This here is your 4G antenna. You can glue it somewhere inside your car and I guess you can get paid 4G network. So I'm not gonna be using that. This here is your GPS antenna that would plug into here. I'm not gonna use this either. This GPS antenna is for you to use native app of this head unit for navigation. 
It has external microphone. I'm not gonna be using this external microphone because this head unit comes with a microphone built into a screen and it's right next to the driver. And I have already tested this mic, it works really great. But if you're gonna decide to connect this external mic, I'm gonna have instructions at the end of my video how to run it up your pillar and to your headliner. This harness here is for the backup camera. I'm not gonna be installing it. This here is for the, I don't know, speakers, subwoofer. I'm not gonna be installing it. And this here are two USB cables. They are identical part number. I'm just gonna use one. This one looks a little more beefier and longer actually. And this here is your Wi-Fi signal. I'm gonna use this Wi-Fi antenna. It's gonna go here. This will allow me to connect this unit to the network and I'm gonna be able to update software and stuff like that. And I believe that's how the CarPlay works too, using a Wi-Fi connection as well. So, so far out of everything here, I'm only gonna take this USB and this Wi-Fi antenna. If your 4Runner does not have JBL sound system, you'll need to get this CB004 power cable harness. This plug is going to plug into the head unit. This plug is going to plug into your car's OEM harness. Then you'll need to get additional harness adapter PT546CH. I bought this at the dealer for $40. And this thing is going to plug into this. And that's going to plug into your car's OEM harness. If your 4Runner came with the JBL sound system, you'll need to get CB005 power cable harness. And this part of the harness is gonna plug into the head unit. And these two plugs is gonna plug in directly into your car's OEM harness. And that's all you're gonna need. You will need to use these two plugs for the antenna. And I'm gonna show you what additional adapters you're gonna need for your antenna. So to connect your car's OEM antenna system to this head unit, you'll need to buy this Metro 40-UV43 male to female adapter. So it has two ends here and one end here like so. You'll also need to buy this micro antenna adapter tip. And this tip is gonna go into here and I'll show you inside the car how you would connect everything. You'll need to get one more antenna adapter. That's what it looks like. You can buy it on Amazon for six, seven dollars. So you'll take this beefy harness and you plug it into your head unit and then you'll plug your antenna into here and then you'll take this connector and you'll plug it into here. This wire will not go anywhere, I just left it loose. Then you'll take this male to female adapter, you'll plug it into this harness and then this will plug into your car's OEM antenna system. You'll basically need all of this to make it work. This is kind of a pain in the butt, but yeah, that's part of the process. Let's quickly prep our head unit and install it into the car. First thing first, I'm gonna install this Wi-Fi antenna and I'm gonna use eight millimeter to tighten this antenna. Bam, it's copper, don't go too hard. Okay, now we'll prep our head unit and install the OEM brackets. And your OEM brackets should go on there, no problem. You'll also need to get this uh, Toyota Scion multi-kit because this head unit is a little smaller and you'll have big gaps. So you'll just install it like so. Just screw everything down nice and tight. This side is ready. And you'll notice it kind of teeter-totters on there. So before you start putting the plastic adapter piece, cinch it down first really well and then put the plastic piece on there. Bam, head unit is ready to go. All right, I'm just gonna test fit here. This is my dash, and I'll see how this head unit sits in that dash. Sits good. All right, let's start installing our head unit. These are all the OEM stereo plugs you have. This here are the two antenna wires, and you'll need this micro adapter to go on, onto this one, just like so. Then you'll use this male to female it doesn't matter which one goes where now you convert it to a single antenna wire next step is i'm gonna take this harness and i'm gonna plug in this fat harness into here and this requires no splicing this one is gonna go into here next step is we need this little adapter antenna adapter i'm just gonna plug it into this one bam now i'm gonna connect these two antenna plugs right over here. I'm not gonna use any of these plugs here. This here will go into head unit and this will go into head unit as well. Plug this right in and I'll take this antenna 
and plug this right in. Technically, our head unit should be working right now. I'm gonna connect this USB cable. I'm not gonna have a port on the dashboard. I'm just gonna let it hang out here on the bottom. So I'm gonna run it through. Bam. And I'm just gonna let it hang out here. And this USB cable is gonna plug into here. Bam. Now we have to gather all this wiring and find a place for it inside this cavity. You just kind of shove it in there and you hope everything is gonna fit right in. I'm gonna temp it on there, connect the screen and make sure the unit boots up and everything works before I'm gonna reassemble the whole dash. All right, here comes the screen. This thing is massive. I hope it's not gonna look all stupid and hideous. Slide it down. Wow, you can adjust the height of it too, how high you want it to be or how low. Man, so far it looks good. Silver kind of matches the look of car. All right guys, moment of truth. Let's see if this thing boots up. Android 10. Okay, this is how long it takes for it to boot up. Not too long, not too short. I guess that's all right. All right, let's see if the radio works. It works. I don't wanna play any music to get hit with the copyright stuff. So from the top you have quick access. You can do Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, brightness, auto mode. Okay, this here is our home screen. Let's try to connect our phone. You hit this icon, swipe to the right. The screen is pretty responsive, it's pretty nice. Go auto link, it says waiting. Then go to your phone's Bluetooth and it should appear at the bottom. BT1490, it says Bluetooth pairing request, pair, allow contacts and favorite sync, allow. Connecting, connecting. Bam. Wireless CarPlay, that's pretty cool. Maps, all the apps. Yeah, that's the CarPlay. Okay, so far I like this unit, it's pretty nice. I like the screen. I can't wait to assemble everything and see what it looks like. I also wanna quickly mention something about this unit. This specific unit is their newest one. It has the best wireless CarPlay, but the sucky thing is, if you want a wired CarPlay for your iPhone, this unit does not support wired CarPlay for the iPhone. I do have the USB cable hooked up, but this USB cable does not support wired CarPlay. It only supports wired CarPlay for Androids. So keep that in mind. But so far, this unit is pretty nice and seamless. I like the screen, uh, the touch screen, it works pretty good. Everything seems to be working pretty responsively. So, okay, let's assemble everything. Right, removing the screen. Put rest of these bolts in. All right, next step is this piece of plastic here. Reconnect the four wheel drive switch, rear glass, emergency lights, pop the knee panel off, slowly work it in there. Yeah, make sure you get these lower corners in. Two 10 millimeter bolts here. This will hold this plastic panel in and the head unit. And one more 10 millimeter bolt down here. Don't forget about that one. Put this knee panel back on. 10 millimeter bolt down here, 10 millimeter bolt down here. Then this beauty ring, it can only go one way. Now this piece here. Now this here, plug everything in. Bam. And climate control, plug it in. One screw in the bottom. And last but not least, and last step is to install this floating screen. I like it actually. I thought it was gonna look pretty hideous, but so far it's not too bad. I wasn't sure if it's gonna block my vents, but it's actually not blocking the vents. It's not that crazy big. And since everything else is silver, this silver too, it actually kind of matches everything. Perfect. 
so far i'm so happy with this head you know it looks so great and matches the native look of my vehicle and if you go on this company's website they do such a great job designing this unit and making them look as oem as possible for multiple years and models screen is so responsive it's so crisp it's such a high definition screen they have upgraded processor I was very concerned about not having the wired CarPlay, but after driving with this head unit for three weeks, I've noticed zero issues, zero lags, zero drops. This unit is legit. Last thing we have to do to completely integrate this unit into this car's ecosystem is enable steering wheel controls. Let me turn on some music. And if I try to turn up the volume or turn it down, it's not gonna work. I have to go here for that. So, and this process is so simple. To make your OEM steering wheel controls work, go home, hit settings, cars infotainment, and scroll through this menu. At the bottom, you'll find SWC. This stands for steering wheel controls. Here you'll find all the options you can program these buttons to. So I want to volume up to be programmed to my volume up, volume down, it's blinking. I want it to be programmed to volume down. Next track, up. I want it to be programmed to this button. Back to this, mode to mode. Go back home, go to CarPlay. Now I'm able to control volume. Easy. I'm now ready to peel this screen protective film. I also wanted to time it and see how long it takes for the phone to connect to this head unit from the moment you turn on your car. Let's set a timer and turn on the car. Ready, set, go. All right, we're three seconds in, four, five. Five seconds in, we got Android logo on. Okay, it's 10 seconds, Android logo is still hanging out, still hanging out. 15 seconds, Android logo switched to different Android logo. Not bad, we're 20 seconds. Okay, 20 seconds in. 23 seconds in, we got a home screen. When are we gonna connect to the phone? Okay, here's the wireless car play. All right, I mean, uh, it, it's taken a little bit of a time. So it took 37 seconds. But like I said, I've been using this unit for about three weeks and it never bothered me. By the time I start the car, get in, buckle up, next thing I know, my phone is connected. So 30 seconds is actually pretty fast. You can watch YouTube videos right on this screen. And I know you might say it's not the best idea, but we have kids and kids love watching YouTube cartoons while we're driving. So go to network settings, enable your Wi-Fi, and you can hotspot off of your phone. That's what we normally do when we're driving. It did connect to my garage Wi-Fi. Once head unit connected to Wi-Fi, hit home, go to your YouTube app, bam. Now you have access to your YouTube channel. Visibility and how comfortable it is. Perfect. The MPG. And you don't have to be stopped to use this feature. You can be driving, your kids can be sitting in the back and watching YouTube videos. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're looking to upgrade your OEM unit to something more modern with the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, I highly recommend this company, Road Envy. The quality and technology they put into these units is worth the money they're charging for them. If you have any questions or new ideas, leave a comment below, like this video, subscribe, share with others. And at the end of this video, you'll find a tutorial how to run an external microphone from this head unit and to this point. So continue watching if you're planning to do that. I'm gonna run this mic from here all the way across down this pillar, up this headliner and up to here. So I'll be taking this apart. Not too much work, but pop this out. That's it, just a couple of plugins. And this comes off. Next thing up, whoops. They're just sitting in there like so. Then you have two 10 millimeter screws holding that in. So yeah, I'll run my mic behind here. Now this thing has to come off. I need a Phillips screwdriver. Pop this off. And that, those are your plugins for the vanity light. This is your secondary one. I believe it's just a little 
plastic screw that's it there's a screw right there right. this comes right out this thing should come right out there shouldn't be any screws in there nothing And this here unplugs. Bam. Now, I think I have access all the way up to here for my mic wire. Let's give it a shot. Okay, I think that should be long enough. Tuck it underneath here. Bring it down here into the A pillar column. I might even run it behind here, behind my cluster gauge. Bam, and here's my mic. I think I have plenty of slack here, plenty of slack here. Let's install the plaster gauge back in place so it's held in by three screws. 